Three successive U.S. presidents have pledged to end the forever wars in the Middle East, but tens of thousands of troops remain in the region at any given time. The justifications include countering terrorism, defending Israel, preventing nuclear proliferation, protecting human rights, preserving stability. Now, all of these objectives have value, but none merit a permanent U.S. military garrison in the region. In some cases, the presence of U.S. forces actually undermines U.S. goals. For nearly 20 years, an overinflated U.S. military footprint, arms sales, and assistance have frequently destabilized the Middle East, making Americans less safe. And the implicit security guarantees the U.S. has given to regional partners often fuel the partners' reckless policies, entangling us in many localized disputes that keep U.S. forces bogged down indefinitely. Now, U.S. strategic interests in the Middle East should derive from the core national objectives of advancing the security and well-being of the American people. That means preventing the emergence of a regional military hegemon and facilitating the flow of oil through the Strait of Hormuz. Does any conventional military in the Middle East have the capability to achieve either regional military domination or the closure of the Strait? The answer is no. The challenges the U.S. has faced trying to control the Middle East should also provide skepticism that any other foreign power, like China or Russia, would want to repeat the costly U.S. mistakes. As the Pentagon reconsiders its force posture, it needs to align its military presence in the Middle East with America's strategic interests. This means a responsible and timely drawdown of U.S. forces in the region. Another key step involves regional actors creating a new security architecture within the Gulf region, one that doesn't rely on the United States. If the U.S. genuinely pursues its vital interests in the Middle East, then there's no compelling need for a permanent presence of U.S. forces. It's time for the region to recalibrate according to its own multipolar balance of power. And it's also time for the U.S. to recalibrate its forces, to reflect its strategic interests. So U.S. political leaders can fulfill their long-running pledge and finally bring American soldiers home.